morning. My name's Tom Press, and you're listening to the Inquisition Update on Liberty Radio Live and First Amendment Radio. On this Wednesday, January, 3rd, uh, January 14th, 2009 edition, and uh, as many of you know, we're on location here at East, uh, East 5th Street and Hazel in downtown Texarkana, Arkansas, in front of the juvenile court building, where members of Tony Alamo Ministries are in court this very moment to try to get their kids back. But it looks like uh, the system is designed to, uh, to elicit the response that the court desires, and that is that the children be taken into protective custody, be taken away from their families, and uh, divided from their parents and divided from their siblings, and to be used to, bear, to bring forth the testimony that the court desires in support of their claim, their false claim that Tony Alamo is some kind of a pervert, some kind of a polygamist, and some kind of a, uh, a pedophile. This ministry has been persecuted for nigh on to 30 years now. And they've been tilling this soil for what, for the outcome that they're seeking today. None of the charges that have ever been brought against Tony Alamo have, have, listed, have elicited a conviction except for one tax evasion charge. The ministry was selling jackets designer jackets and they couldn't get them on any other charge so they brought up a tax evasion charge by taking away the ministry's 501c3 tax exempt status and then charging them back taxes besides that <clears throat> members of the law of law enforcement confiscated financial records of the ministry and kept them away from the court that would have exonerated Tony Alamo but now, after a Waco-style FBI state police raid, took children into custody, have made several, several raids, even one on a highway, where they now have 26 of the minister's children. And I'm, I'm understanding now, through uh, mainstream reporting, that one of the male members of the congregation has been jailed because of a uh, on a contempt of court charge that he would not comply with the court order to reveal the whereabouts of his children and his wife the man honestly wants to protect his family and uh, I was asked this morning by a mainstream press member what do you think of this arrest and I have no opinion my opinion is he tried to do the best that he could for his children. And my heart and my prayers go out for him and his bravery to stand in front of the court and defy the court order on the benefit of his own children. Now, yesterday I was approached by several uh, newspapers, one of which was the, uh, the uh, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I haven't seen that article yet. And uh, I have seen the article by the Texarkana Gazette. I interviewed with the reporter yesterday against my better judgment because I know what the mainstream media, particularly that of the Arkansas uh, Gazette's uh, position has been in the past, is unfriendly to Tony Alamo. And obviously, as expected, her reporting wasn't favorable to either me or Tony Alamo. And also, as expected, they tried to make me the story rather than this this terrible atrocity that's, that's occurred against this family. Nonetheless, I answered the questions. And the one reporter from the Texarkana Gazette asked me, one of the questions she asked me was, Tom, what would it take you to believe the charges against Tony Alamo? And I'm ashamed of my answer, but I'll tell you what I asked her. I said, are you 
an investigative journalist or just a journalist? And she said, well, I'd like to think I'm an investigative journalist. So I said, then go home, pack your bags, <clears throat> go down to Falk, Arkansas, and take your abode in one of the empty houses now in the congregation. There's plenty of room down there. And live with this, these people for a while. Go to church with them. Pray with them. Eat with them. Go to their schools. Talk to their children. Talk to the parents. Investigate this matter. And her response to me was, but I've got kids. I've got other commitments. Is that an excuse? And I, my reply to her was, I've got a wife in Iowa. And with that, she kind of looked down at the ground with a bit of shame in her face, and she just walked away. Why is it so tempting to repeat the years and decades of lies, to take a position against Tony Alamo in this ministry without one whit of real investigative journalism, without any real investigation at all? It appears to me that the entire system is built to get the results that the court and the government desire. This family has no advocates. We had one lady that walked by, read the picket signs, and said she too was a victim of Department of Human Services. And she told her story and she carried a picket sign. As far as I know, that's the only human being that is here at the courthouse besides myself to defend this, these families. But there's not a frown among these people. They're all upbeat. They're all smiling. They're all praying. They're all reading the scriptures and discussing examples in history where God defended his people against unjust judges. I'd like to direct the listeners to Tony Alamo's website, TonyAlamoMinistries.org, TonyAlamoMinistries.com, and read the articles, read the newsletters on his website. Read the story about unjust judges. Look what God did to unjust judges. God sees everything that's taking place in this courthouse, and while we may suffer a defeat here and there, God's keeping the tabs on all of this. And we have faith and hope and trust that righteousness will ultimately prevail, in this case, for Tony Alamo and his family and the children be restored to the loving Sorry about the interruption with the uh, siren. I hope you can hear me all right. It's important for everyone to realize that the people that are waging this assault, this inquisition against Tony Lamo and this ministry are so compartmentalized, so hidden from the facts that they can't see the overall purpose behind all this. But I am told that there are several members of the Department of Human Services staff members who have interviewed these children and have come to the realization that this whole thing is an attempt to use the children to elicit the court's desire, evidence to support their bogus charge against Tony Alamo and this ministry. And as a result of that, of that realization, they have quit their jobs at the Department of Human Services. And I make an appeal to the listening audience, if you're a listener in Texarkana or, or somewhere in the area, and you know one of these DHS staff members who in disgust have realized that they've been used as an instrument of unrighteousness and injustice in this case, who have interviewed the children and determined in their own hearts and minds that none of the charges that are levied against these, these, these families and Tony Alamo are true and that these children are being used as hostages 
to eventually uh, distress them to the point that they can draw out whatever kind of testimony, supporting testimony that they want to help convict Tony Alamo in this ministry and have left the Department of Human Services in disgust. Those people have real stories to tell, real information. And we need to pray that God would convict the Spirit for those people. Now, having quit their jobs, they no longer have that carrot dangling over their, over their heads. Now, having quit their jobs, that they'd be free in their spirit to tell the truth about what their observations were with the children and what they feel about the, about the, the treatment of Tony Alamo and these families. In the second half hour of the broadcast, I'm going to take calls from listeners. The call-in number is 559-781-3773. Again, 559-781-3773. And I make an appeal to the listeners to help us pray that one of these Department of Human Services employees will step forward and give us some real information information that the Department of Human Services doesn't want public. I was asked again yesterday by Deborah Andersek, in compliance with the court order, to take the video of Angela, her daughter, off the website at inquisitionupdate.org on First Amendment Radio and LibertyRadioLive.com. If you want to see the article, if you want to see the, the video, go to LibertyRadioLive.com and click on the link to inquisitionupdate.org and watch the videos, and read the articles, and listen to the interview that Greg Sismansky did a week ago with John Peeler, the FBI agent who was solicited by the Clinton administration to come to Falk, Arkansas, infiltrate the ministry, and kill Tony Alamo. That's right. John Peeler, an FBI agent, special unit with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which I like to call the Federal Bureau of Inquisition, was solicited by the Clinton administration to come and kill Tony Alamo. John Peeler came, infiltrated the, 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 the congregation, and determined that Tony Alamo was squeaky clean. As a matter of fact, while he was there, he was well taken care for, and he received the gospel and gave his life to Christ. And now he's telling the truth about Tony Alamo Ministries. And he's to be praised for risking his own life to come out and tell the truth. And since I've come down here, I've also had a chance to talk to some of the members of this congregation. Each and every one of them tell the story about how they were drug addicts, alcoholics, engaged in illicit affairs and sexual impropriety. And they were given the gospel and they got saved and they joined this ministry to worship and to live a clean, healthy Christian life a biblical life in obedience to the commandments of Father they each and every one have their own story to tell and they're eternally grateful for the salvation of Jesus Christ and the testimony of Tony Alamo and his ministry and they defend him this nonsense that he's a polygamist is just filthy stories. The, the idea that he's some kind of a pedophile is abhorrent to these people who live in the ministry, who gave up a life of sin to come and li live in this ministry. What in God's name? Why would anybody suspect these people of having come out of lives like that? received the gospel and received the help and hope of Tony Alamo and his ministry, why would they allow him to molest their children and stay in the ministry? It defies common sense. But somehow the mainstream media and the disgruntled family members who've been kicked out of the ministry for not obeying the Lord's commandments and not complying with ministry rules and regulations have formed an agenda and a, and a vendetta. And they're the ones who spread these ugly lies that's picked up by the mainstream media just because it sells papers. Bad news sells. 
the truth is a rarity. And by greed, these these ugly stories about Tony Alamo ministers have become common knowledge down here. Nobody tells the truth except the people in the ministry. And that puts the odd, odd man out, and they've been destroyed in the, in the court of public opinion for decades. And they have no help in this court system. No help but the eternal Lord of glory who looks down upon this mess and sees it for what it is, and he's holding every man and woman and child accountable. Now, we may have to wait some time for justice to be rendered in this, but we know the Lord, and we know his people. These people have sanctified their lives. They're on their knees in prayer, worshiping the Lord of glory and asking for an answer from heaven. But I'm afraid that the justice that this case deserves won't be rendered in this court. And it'll take some act of God to make justice for these families and these children. And that is our hope. Somehow in all of this, the Lord is going to glorify himself. And that's what we seek. We seek no glory for ourselves. Investigate, uh, 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 Inquisition update did not come here. To, to detract from this story. Didn't come here to to be the story. We come here in hopes and prayers that God would call, make himself powerful and would be seen as all powerful in this. And that his name would be glorified in all of this. No flesh is going to be seen righteous and holy when all of this is over. This isn't about the flesh. This is about Christ and the truth. And we count on him to vindicate his own name in this case and restore these kids to these grieving parents as so though they might return to the ministry with Tony Alamo, their pastor, and carry on their mission of mercy across this world. It isn't just the local congregation that this ministry is for. It's a, it's a worldwide ministry. I wish people would go to alamoministries.com and look at the website, look at the projects that this ministry has taken to make give Bibles and gospel tracts and medical supplies and every kind of human help and spiritual help to all who need it with no charge, free for the asking. The mail room is busy all the time sending out Bibles and gospel tracts and newsletters and and uh, helping people on other continents. Those people are hungry for the Word of God. But my perception is they're far more hungry for truth and righteousness than we here in fat, dumb, and lazy America. It's a shame, but it's a truth that it, that once recognized is stark. It, it's a it's a it's a it's a shattering experience to understand this. It's my pleasure to have been down here and to see these people for myself this afternoon, since they placed the gag order on the families, and I can't get any real live time, uh, real time information without putting the families at risk for arrest for violation of the court order. I'm going to drive on down to Falk, Arkansas, and I'm going to see the church, talk to the members of the congregation who are helping there, and I might stay for a, a church service tonight and eat supper with them if it doesn't jeopardize the families, and ask if there's something else that I can do for Tony Alamo Ministries to help get their, their story told. And if there's nothing else that I can do, I think I'm going to go home tomorrow. So I'll ask Nicholas to cover for me. And uh, I'll see you on the broadcast Friday if I can get there in time. But I want each and every one to be in prayer for this ministry. It's God who we seek for hope and help. The flesh can't avail us much down here. The system is all designed to elicit the response that they need to finish this inquisition against Tony Alamo. 
and the mainstream media cherry picks even what I said here, tried to make me the story and cherry pick what I said. But I told him the truth that despite the compartmentalization of the people in this ministry, uh, uh, in this courtroom, at the top is some archbishop who's calling the shots, who wants this minister shut down, and who wants to accuse them of the same atrocities that they're guilty of, that is pedophilia. I want to remind the listeners one more time that there are 4,500 pedophile priests in this country. 4,500. If the same measure of justice was implied, was applied to the Roman Catholic Church and these pedophile priests that is now being applied to Tony Alamo Ministries on the mere accusation, then DHS wouldn't have room for any Tony Alamo kids. When asked, Tom, what would it take for you to believe the accusations? Here's the answer I should have given that Texarkana Gazette reporter. I want the same evidence that President Bill Clinton got off on. I want DNA evidence that's the standard for justice in sexual crimes in this country. DNA evidence. If Tony Alamo is a pedophile, I want the DNA evidence. And I want a righteous judge to apply righteousness in this country. Are they going to convict Tony Alamo and this ministry and these families on hearsay alone? Where's the DNA? Where's the blue dress for Tony Alamo? There isn't one. And there isn't going to be one. But they're going to get the conviction that they want because they're going to keep the kids away from their parents and their siblings until they can draw out the testimony they need. This is a Holy Roman Inquisition, and it needs to be seen for what it really is. If we miss the, li the link, of, of the Vatican's history in all this, then we miss the story altogether. And it's absolutely imperative that everyone realize that the Vatican controls our government, and they are the ones who mete out justice. They are the ones who seat the judges in these courts. There are no righteous judges in this land. They're under pressure to do what the Vatican wants done. They're under pressure to do what the archbishops want done. And while all the pedophile priests go free and go from parish to parish, from city to city, from state to state, from county to county, from country to country, from continent to continent, and if nothing else, they put them up at the Vatican. Welcome back to Inquisition Update. My name's Tom Press. I want to remind the listening audience that the Inquisition Update can be heard Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock Central Time, 11 o'clock Eastern. And I invite the listeners to call in. If you want to call and talk to me, uh, call at the station at 559-781-3773. If you're a member of the ministry and you want to put in a good word for Tony Alamo and the family, if, uh, if you're also a victim of Department of Human Services and the justice system in this country, and you'd like to sound off. If you've got some advice for the families, or a prayer to share, or just wanna just wanna sound off about this, call the station at 559-781-3773, and they'll put you on the broadcast. We'll be glad to hear from you. Do we have a caller? Okay, I thought I heard a little feedback there. But we're, again, reporting live on scene at East 5th Street in Hazel in downtown Texarkana, Arkansas, at the juvenile court, where last night, near dusk, a judge ordered the arrest of one of the members of Tony Alamo's ministries for not revealing the whereabouts of his wife and children. He defied the court order to protect his family. 
and he's now in prison for not disclosing where his children are. This court is determined to take his children and to hold them hostage until they can elicit the, the, the response, the testimony that they desire, that they need to save face in this, in this, in this abomination they call justice. I want to ask the listeners, when they went to Tony Alamo Ministries and they found no guns and they found no pornography and they found no kitty porn, why didn't they just leave? Why did they take the children? They had to know before the raid was over they had no evidence. Why didn't they just leave? Why did they take the children? Now, they'll tell you that they suspect Tony Alamo of sexual impropriety with these kids. Have a caller? Yes, go ahead, caller. Uh, Tom? Yeah, go ahead. This is Aaron. How are you doing? Oh, hi, Aaron. Aaron Burke, my friend from Texarkana. Go ahead, Aaron. Well, I just wanted to call in real quick and uh, make a little quick testimony. Uh, as you know, I, I met... Uh, Richard Andersek last night for the first time, and uh, I just wanted the listeners to know that, uh, you know, everybody thinks that these folks are a cult and uh, they're strange, but uh, this was probably one of the most well-balanced, godly men I'd met in a long time. And... uh, Frankly, I mean, if, if you want to talk about cults, I mean, I think that uh, the mainstream churches are more of a cult than these people ever would be. Um, I'd have to he, agree with you. He seems like a godly man. He He's searching and seeking the truth constantly. Uh, there was nothing profane about him. There was nothing strange about him. He was just a, he was a good and godly man. And I just, I want your listeners to know that, you know, these people are not freaks. They're not strange. They're really nice, good people. They're godly people. I said on the broadcast yesterday that I wouldn't be ashamed to share quarters with any of these people. I wouldn't be ashamed to take them home to my mother. I know, these, these people I, and I are, agree with you 100%. These people are well read in the scriptures. They know the Bible by heart. You never hear any profanity out of their mouth. How, how, how would somebody with that caliber of character would tolerate sexual impropriety between Tony Alamo and these little kids? It's impossible. Exactly. They're but well they, groomed, they're people... well dressed, they're well educated, they're above average, considerably above average. Yes, they are. By my estimation, it seems ludicrous to rate to wage these type of allegations against these families when the purity exudes from every one of them. Their innocence is plain on their faces. I agree. At and, some uh, point in time, if you were to talk to an individual as 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 relentlessly as I have for the last day now, a day and a half. Wouldn't you think that I might uncover a, a contradiction or, or, or an off-color comment or in the face of this, of this incessant pressure, some disgust or, 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 or some lashing out? There hasn't been one incident of it. There has not been one incident of it. I'm the only one on this whole block for the last two days that's even raised my voice. I know. And, and I've never was, seen I've never seen individuals under this kind of pressure with absolutely no outward appearance of distress whatsoever. I agree. I mean, there, there was there was nothing in his face or his attitude that indicated how you know how stressed I'm sure he probably is on the inside. But he, I mean, he was, he was calm. You know, he, he, he was 
just I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how stable he was in the midst of all this. Now, Richard Andrasek, for the listening audience, his daughter, his 16-year-old daughter, was taken from the ministry. She's been separated from her from her father and her mother and from her siblings and has been put in a foster home with strange people. And I want the listeners also to realize that if taken out of a godly community and placed in foster care where every person in the foster home is a stranger, not related, and mixed groups of male and female of various ages, that there is a six times greater likelihood of sexual impropriety and rape in the foster homes than there is in the average uh, uh, per capita average in this country. Six times greater incidence of, of sexual abuse, of physical abuse, of crime, of rape, of unwanted pregnancy, and these Department of Human Services foster homes are no place for any kid, particularly a child who has grown up in a Christian ministry under God's teaching. I agree. It's, it's a travesty of justice that these well-groomed, well-educated, well-spoken kids who have no sophistication, no street smarts, have never been exposed to the to the to the filth of this world, at least to the degree that it that it influenced them to be treated like victims of this man for which there is no, not one shred of evidence, not one shred of evidence. You know, they found a blue dress that was supposed to have contained some DNA from President Bill Clinton, but even that didn't convict him. Where's the blue dress for Tony Alamo? Isn't that a good question, Aaron? That's a great question. I mean, I, I feel like the, these people have essentially kidnapped these children and taken out, of, taken them out of perfectly good homes. And I, and I, I'm, I'm afraid that I'm ashamed of a lot of the locals here because I, I hear it all the time. They, they think that uh, his church is a cult and they're so bad. And, and there was a, an incident not too long ago that he had placed uh, security guards down there because uh, someone actually shot uh, one of their windows out. And now yeah, that was a drive. That was a drive-by shooting where they shot at the at the church. Right. And as a result of that, for, to protect the families and the kids, they did hire a security company uh, that did that did wear sidearms. Exactly. And that's and where not. that's where they, they used that to trump up the idea that the ministry was was hoarding guns, and that's right. just a little nucleus that started the big lie that Tony Lamo and his ministry had guns. They never found anything. Go ahead, Aaron. Wow. And and the locals, you know, they were all up in arms about it, you know, simply because the security guard would check people as they came by in the street. You know, he was just simply trying to protect the family. But uh, I've been telling everybody, you know, look, these people are innocent until proven guilty. Uh, have you looked at their church? Have you talked to them? Have you investigated it for yourself? And, of course, the answer is no. And i tell you something else, too. Uh, I, I realized that you said earlier in the broadcast that you, you had planned on going down there and checking out the church and everything. And that's something I plan to do myself as well. I yeah. plan on going down there. I plan on investigating it for myself and, and coming up with my own conclusion, which at this point is that these people are well-rounded, good Christian people, and they have nothing wrong with them. What's the word? Not, go ahead, Aaron. But there, I mean, there's there's no signs of abuse. There is no evidence. There's no DNA. There's nothing but but false, uh, hollow, empty allegations. That's all it is. And I just now, I don't understand. Now, 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 Aaron, you're a working man, aren't you? You've got kids and a wife here in Texarkana. Is that correct? 
Well, I have no children, but I am a working man, and I do have a wife. Yes, that's correct. But you're willing to, t to spend some time and go down and spend some time at Alamo Ministries and see that place for yourself and talk to the people and do your own investigation into this. Is that correct? Is that what you're telling the audience? That is, that is exactly right. Well, I talked to a reporter from the Texarkana Gazette who, I, who questioned me, what would it take for me to believe the charges against Tony Alamo? Being a Tony Alamo supporter, she wanted to know what charges, what, what, what evidence would it take for me to believe the charges against Tony Alamo? And I said, I don't believe these charges. They've been chilling this soil for over 30 years to elicit this, this culmination today in this court. And I said, if, if, are you an investigative journalist or are you just a journalist? And she said, I'd like to think I'm an investigative journalist. And I said, pack your bags. Go down to the ministry and do some investigation into this instead of just repeating the mantra. She admitted she'd never been to the, to, to the ministry. She didn't do any investigation into this at all. And she's, she's a writer in a mainstream newspaper here in Texarkana, Arkansas. And here's what I should have told her. I'll tell you what it's going to take for me to believe the accusations against Tony Alamo. The same the same evidence that, that Bill Clinton got off on, the blue dress, the DNA. And, uh, but when I told her she had to, she should pack her bags to go down to the ministry and stay for a while, she says, well, I've got commitments. I've got children. And I told her, I've got a wife in Iowa. Hey, Tom. And now I'm talking to another member. Tom. Texarkana. Go ahead. Uh, why don't we let this caller go and, and get the next one trying to call okay. in. Okay. Bye, Aaron. That's Thanks fine. for calling in. Who's the next caller? We're going to find out. Okay. Hang on. Uh, your I'll name and where you're calling from. You're on the air. My name's Pat from Indiana. Go ahead, Pat. You're talking. It's Tom. I'm from Indiana. I'm calling because of uh, Tony Alamo. And um, I'm wondering where the Christian people are down in Canada. The church, the so-called church, is supposed to be defending their people. Being the fact that the, this guy that was sent there to, to infiltrate their, their church because, uh, through the Clinton administration tells me a whole lot. Isn't that enough for the church to want to investigate and to get the DNA and find out for themselves? Why are they just taking these people's word? You know, I know it's Satan that's doing this to those poor souls. And we've really been praying a lot for them. But I know God is not going to let them down. Well, I appreciate your call. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing the caller. Uh, Nick, if you can turn up her audio just a bit. I'm here on a cell phone with a lot of extraneous noise here. But I understand that you're asking the question, why don't the other churches do some investigation and support this ministry? And that's yeah. a good question. Nobody wants to be associated with Tony Alamo Ministries, not even the mainstream churches here in Texarkana and surrounding areas. They've demonized this, this congregation for so long. It's so common knowledge of all the accusations that have been leveled against this ministry for over 30 years that nobody, they just take it as a... They just take it as fact. And if there are any doubters in these surrounding churches, they just don't want to be called a supporter of Tony Alamo Ministries. They don't have what I claim they're fearful and doubting. They're fearful that they will be subjected to the same type of persecution if they support Tony Alamo Ministries. And my answer to them is that if you sit on this, you encourage more of the same type of persecution. And I submit to the listening audience that if we allow this atrocity to continue against Tony Alamo Ministries, that the same type of persecution is going to be leveled at all of us, particularly Christian churches who are non-ecumenical, that is, not members of the ecumenical movement to reunite with the Roman Catholic Church. That's what ecumenism means. If you're in an ecumenical church, you're in a, a church that belongs to the World Council of Churches or the National Council of Churches, 
your destiny has already been determined that you will formally reunite with the Roman Catholic Church when this is all over. Now, Tony Alamo for decades has been telling that the Vatican controls our government, they control our justice system, and that's what's behind not only Tony's persecution, but also the persecution behind the FLDS in Texas and Arizona and Utah. And we've all seen in the papers the accusations made against them. But those kids were ordered to be released by the Department of Human Services and restored to their families. We want that justice for Tony Alamo and his family. We have religious liberty in this country, guaranteed by the Constitution, and our government cannot establish a religion in this country. Well, I it's against to say, our... Go ahead, caller. I wanted to say that even our congressman, uh, Congressman Pence here in Indiana, said he's a born-again uh, Catholic. You know, they're in all the high places. They're the ones that's calling the move. They are. Right. They have all been infiltrated. I feel like we've had a great falling away of the truth. Our country wouldn't be in this condition if it hasn't happened already. And I believe everything that you're saying about the ecumenical movement. Our churches has been deceived, and even the Bible says they even want it so. They say, yeah. "Tell us more lies." You know, they right. love it. So, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's hard to, to to get this across to the people that's gone to these churches, you know, because we're here in Indiana trying all the time to to wake them up. And uh, yeah. there's a pastor in Ohio that's trying to tell the people about the the pastors that's going in with uh, Billy Graham and FEMA, and uh, what their jobs will be just exactly what the Catholics did in Germany. Uh, yes. They took off their robes and put on their military uniforms, and they that's helped. That's exactly them. right, ma'am. Uh, and my niece and my nephew, they're into that, too. They've already yeah. joined that, and I wrote them a great big long letter, and I give them all the evidence of Billy Graham and, and the Pope and Hitler, and I have not heard a word back from them. So, uh, you know, they want to have it so, and I think God's going to give them a strong delusion, and I think that's what the, he has. Otherwise, this country would not be in the mess it's in. Ma'am, I'm so glad to hear that you're doing the research and finding out how the Vatican has been involved in government and wars and persecutions in the past so that you can see clearly who's behind this persecution. You are to be applauded. You are one of the rare callers that, that, I, that I talk to who's taken it upon themselves to do their own research to see this. Now, I gave some examples to the reporters, the mainstream reporters that were here yesterday. I gave them the, the titles and authors of books and websites, and I just hope and pray that the Lord convict them to do this research that you've done, to find out what the ecumenical movement is all about, to find out what, what the Vatican's involvement in our government is. And you are to be applauded, and you are not to be silent about this, because if we remain silent, we will also be subjected to this same type of persecution. Yes. I agree totally with you, and yes, we have studied a long time, and yes, we know what's coming, and yes, we know, you know, what they've done to our churches and why the church yeah. is silent. And, and you know by the fact that those churches down there in Texarkana, if they're truly of God, why aren't they out there on that corner? Why aren't they demanding evidence? Why don't they go down to that police department or that court and demand evidence? I mean, right. you know, they have to do something. Otherwise, this is coming to them, too. Yes. You're well, exactly right you. about it. And I pray for Tony Alamo and his church and, and all their children. Because yes, we, we all need to a... pray for Tony Alamo and the kids. What kind of a justice system uses kids to elicit the kind of testimony that they desire to, to convict Tony Alamo? It's just, it's just criminal what's going on in this court. And God sees all. Nothing that they do in that courtroom is hidden. They've got a gag order on their family so they can't even tell their side of the story. They can't tell what happened in that courtroom without fear of being arrested. And I wanted and to say just... one more thing about Congressman Pence. He Please says do. he's a, a born-again Irish Catholic, but he also said he helped write the Patriot Act to take away our Constitution. They obliterated it with the Patriot Act 1 and 2, and we've confronted him with all that. So, you yeah. know, people can go down and they need to go to those town councils. They need to, to do everything they can to get this thing turned around before it's too late. Wake up, Texans. 
Chris R. Cannon. Wake up. That's all. Wake up, say. America. Thank you. Do we have another caller? Did I hear you say something, Nick? Uh, just me, uh, Tom. I guess I'll be a caller for a second here. Uh, uh, see the, do, the numbers given out in the room. I guess somebody else is going to call in. But you know, going back to your friend uh, that lives there in Texarkana, what he was saying about how calm the parents are—they have the peace of God, you know, that passes all understanding, because it's hard to understand. And I'll tell you, I encourage people to go over to your website there at. Uh, uh, inquisitionupdate.org and watch the video of the abduction of the children on the roadside and I'll tell you what when I've watched I've watched that several times and it just what it incites in me is rage I mean yeah. I, I could put myself there and I just feel like punching those even those women right in the face you know yeah. I mean, that's the kind of rage that I feel over what happened on the side of that road and uh and I know it would only be the Spirit of God and the peace of God if I was one of those parents to, to, that right. would hold me back and keep right. me from doing that. Because I know the Spirit of God can do that because He is doing it. He does do that. But I know what's, what's natural, and I know what I feel. And I encourage everyone to go over to that video, the, the website there, inquisitionupdate.org. Watch the video of the abduction of those, of those children. Watch the testimony of those girls that uh, after which they they would not have. I mean, just think, you know, just put yourself in their shoes. Most of you are church-going people, and uh, you have a pastor. And say someone brought accusations against your pastor, true or false, you know. And so the government decides to round up all the children of all the families in the church, and then they round up your children. And your children say no abuse, just like these girls said, and they they keep them anyway and farm them out and put them in with homosexual uh, homes and, and as you say uh, where there's a greater uh, probability that they will be raped or sexually abused than they will be in their own homes that's right and uh, that's all I got to say we're going to take this other caller here Tom okay go ahead Nick. okay go ahead caller yeah hi Tom yes hey how you doing um, you're going to have to bear with me I've got a cold so but uh, I've, been, I've been following everything that's going on and um, I'm not a member of their church. I don't go to their church. I haven't gone to their church for years, but you know, I'm going to go back real briefly to about 1972 when I was a um, I was born and raised a Catholic, and um, I got witnessed to by some of the people in their ministry back in 1972, and they preached the gospel to me right on the street. That's right. And, uh, I ended up, you know, going up to their church service. A little investigation on my own, and went up and, and you know went down to their altar during their altar call. And I gave my heart to the Lord over. Gosh, that was over. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. A false witness shall not be unpunished. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. 